Hi, my name is Sam Cusimano, and welcome to Electricity for Progress. Today, we are going to be assembling a biodata sonification device. Whether you're using a kit which you purchased from my store, or if you spun up your own biodata sonification device using my open source designs, you can use these instructions in order to insert your biodata sonification board into a 3D printed enclosure. I have designed a simple 3D printed enclosure in Tinkercad, and the model is available as an STL on my GitHub and shared on Tinkercad, which has a snap-on bottom. It also includes a button, a slide switch top, and a diffuser, which I print in transparent uh, PETG. The screws used are M2 screws, 5 millimeter. we'll need four of them. I also have a little lanyard here which I thought would be a fun addition to the 3D model. My kit uses an ESP32 feather from Adafruit as well as a 400 milliamp hour LiPo battery. I get my batteries and my boards directly through Adafruit and that also ensures that the LiPo battery and its JST connector fit appropriately with the connector on the Adafruit board. If you are building this kit uh, from your own parts that you've sourced, be very careful with LiPo batteries. Make sure you know what you're doing when you make the connections. In order to do the assembly, we take the biodata sonification board and I like to pull up on the potentiometer. I noted in the assembly video for the circuit board to only solder in the main pins on the potentiometer, not to solder in the clips. So here I'm going to pull it up a little tiny bit, and that's going to give us a good angle to easily slide this into the case. It sometimes is very hard fitting electronics into their enclosures, and you'll learn a lot if you're going to design a device on your own through an iterative process of 3D printing, trying, and making sure that you don't uh, design something which damages your device or your components as you're trying to insert them. All right, now that we've looked at the potentiometer, I want to go back to the enclosure and let's insert some of the other components here. We're going to put the diffuser into place. You'll notice on this particular design, there's two pegs that uh, also correspond to two holes that are in the PETG translucent uh, diffuser. I will just put this into place and everything should click in uh, quite nicely. You can also add a dab of uh, glue in order to hold in the diffuser. Uh, it does not come all the way to the surface of the enclosure. It should sit just slightly below. Okay, with that in place, now I'm going to take one uh, little button here. There's a flatted side on the button and that flatted side faces the standoff. Uh, inserting the button isn't too hard. Once the button's inserted, if you've 3D printed this yourself, depending on the tolerances of your printer, you want to hold it in with your finger and then press the button component in and out a few times just to make sure that it slides freely. Now we have our diffuser in place, we have our button in place, it's time to insert the board. Without attaching our ESP32, we want to take our biodata board and slide it in with the uh, jacks and the switch facing down. If the potentiometer was able to flex forward appropriately, it should be really easy to get in. If you have any trouble inserting the board, usually it's the potentiometer which is causing some of the trouble. Again, fiddle around with it a little bit and uh, hopefully you'll be able to get your board inserted easily. Now we have this in there. Uh, before you put the screws in, the next step is to attach the cover plate for the switch. I always like to make sure that I clean out a little bit, again from the 3D print, depending on the tolerance of your 3D printer. Uh, to make it easier to insert this onto the power switch. So then I'm going to come over here, uh, I'm going to hold the circuit board in here with my thumb, and then I'm going to press, uh, and just kind of like wiggling up and down. Don't put too much pressure on that switch, right? You don't want to break any component here. It should slide on fairly easily. 
also one of the reasons that I do this power switch uh, before we put the circuit board together with the screws is because we don't want to have a problem where we break some of the standoffs. Grab a small screwdriver and start to insert these uh, M2 screws. Um, you need to be very careful not to screw the screws in all the way on this first go around. We just want to insert them a little bit, just one turn. And by doing it this way, it keeps the board a little bit loose so we can make sure we have a good, oops, good clean positioning. It also helps to have a magnetic tip on your screwdriver here. Uh, by leaving them loose, it le allows us to wiggle the board around a little bit, making sure we have good positioning of the jacks and everything is able to attach really tight. If you screw, oops, <laughs> if you screw all four screws in tightly, each one, uh, you can sometimes have some trouble. Kind of like putting the tire on a car, uh, you want to tighten everything in a star pattern. So now, I want to look here at uh, the board and it looks like everything lines up really nicely. The slide switch slides back and forth. So I'm just going to hold it in with my thumb again and make light turns. I don't want to tighten the screws super, super tight. Again, this is a 3D printed model, so it, you could break the standoffs. Uh, don't be surprised if you do, depending on your filament and your 3D printer. So I just go around tightening each of the screws a little bit until it feels, uh, you know, pretty tight. Nice. Now the board's definitely not wiggling anywhere. It feels nice and good in place. I can press the button. It clicks smoothly. I can turn the potentiometer. I also now can press the potentiometer down a little bit. Uh, Cause you know, again, we pulled it up in order to have it set in place. Now the last thing we need to do is take our ESP32 board and insert it. Now I'm using short headers here on the Biodata board, but you can see these are standard long headers on the ESP32. Uh, now you can either trim off these headers a little bit, uh, you could buy short headers and solder them onto your ESP32, or you'll see here the tolerances are pretty good. Uh, you can even use the long headers with this circuit board design. So you need to line up the pins of your ESP32 and then press it down evenly. Here you'll see the uh, USB socket is visible. Uh, here I'll bring over my USB port here to make sure that it plugs in appropriately through the hole. Click and it does and everything lights up. So now I'll unplug that. The last thing we need to do is get our battery inserted. I use a little bit of two-sided tape. Here I have some 3M VHB that I'm going to use and uh, put it on one side of the battery and then I'm going to essentially attach the battery to the bottom of the enclosure. There we go, a little bit of the 3M VHB. This 3M tape is a little bit like jelly uh, rather than being super thin. So this gives it a little bit of impact resistance and it allows us not to have that LiPo battery just kind of flapping around in the wind. Uh, what we want to do before we stick the LiPo battery on there, let's plug it into the JST connector. Uh, again, there's only one way that it can connect in there. All right. And then uh, if you flick the power switch, the device should be able to turn right on. Okay. Now I'm going to take the uh, bottom of the enclosure, which is going to snap into place. I'm going to stick Let's see what we should do this the other way. <laughs> Stick the battery onto the bottom of the enclosure. All right. And now all we have to do is insert everything into place and it should snap together. Now, like any snap together thing, remember this is 3D printed. Depending on your filament, it might be easy, it might be hard. So carefully line things up on one edge, go around to the next, snap a little bit, go around to the next snap a little bit, and eventually uh, everything should snap cleanly into place. 
There we go. Now if we flick the switch, our light show lights up. Our biodata sonification device is assembled and ready. Oh wait, we have one more thing we definitely want to do. Let's put on the lanyard. So we'll insert our lanyard into the hole. And we will be able to attach our biodata device to our backpack or our fanny pack or perhaps a tree. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me for this assembly video. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, you can find my biodata sonification kits on my website, electricityforprogress.com in my store. As well, you can find my open source designs on GitHub which includes the 3D printed models for this enclosure, as well as the designs for the circuit and the bill of materials. So thank you all very much. Have a great night. Cheers.